the size of the script. So, you know, I'll write down different ideas, like three different ideas for this line. Or, um, yeah, so I think some of the preparation is in that too. And yeah, and there's not a real big, I mean, the huge preparation is going to theater school. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's Back up like a few years. <laughs> yeah, we make it look like we're just like, yeah, we show up and we're like, all right, let me hear my ref. Okay, great. But the the preparation is like three years of intense theater school, which really got me ready for okay, now I can go in front of the mic and I'm ready to perform. And I'm not and gonna damage my voice. That's a big one that they yeah. teach at school. Yeah, sometimes when I'm reading um, sides with my wife, who's not had the training, I s you can really see the difference, because she's like, okay, and trying to figure out what the character, and then like trying to be emoting and stuff, but then when you've actually gone through the process of, of theater school, you like, you just approach it all in a different way. So, yeah, three years of theater school, and then a bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> There's your memoir. <laughs> or a car drive. Howdy. Uh, silly question. If you ever look back at, uh, like, uh, say you're thinking of Thorax or you're thinking of Silver String, you look back at a different character that you voice, have you ever tried to visualize that character in that position instead? Just for giggles. To visualize, sorry. Can you say it again? To visualize the character doing the stuff that they're doing? Well, uh, visualize the like basically swap the characters' positions. Visualize them in each other's place. Oh. Oh, our characters. Uh, no, no, just just with a different character or different, uh, yeah, different character that you voiced or acted as. Right. Uh, I have. There was one script that I got that because I can't remember why, but some of the names were uh, blanked out. Like, it, it, I think they were trying to like copy and paste and rearrange something, and so I didn't actually know what my lines were <laughs> and what they weren't. So I, I got the answer once I got to the studio, but the printed out copy that I had, there were my lines. Well, they all ended up being my lines. I guess they just, the computer program took out Silverstream. And uh, I didn't know what my lines were, so I sort of just read the whole thing and thought about it for a hot second, and then when I found out what it was, I put some ideas together, but yeah, I guess that's the only situation similarly I've been in. All right, for posterity, do can you either of you sing the fun song from SpongeBob in your voices? Oh my God. I don't know that song. I don't know that there's all that stuff. This well, isn't the Spongebob convention. Well, it's can you not. Do a Little Pony theme song in your voices. Oh god, I don't think I can do that either. Can I tell you a story about uh, what it's like to sing on My Little Pony? Yeah. Uh, yes. Good. Let's hear that. Is that an okay alternative? So obviously Daniel is amazing and is in charge of all the music along with his team. So the first time I came in to sing, I thought, great, I'll just sing and follow along, they send you the sheet music, they send you a recording um, of their team singing it so that you can hear all the harmony lines and all these things. Um, it, <laughs> I'd like to say it went really well. It went okay. I didn't quite like grasp what it was like to sing like a pony at first, because it's very specific. It makes total sense. And you know, like they often have the same uh, people singing a lot of the songs, like Shen and Kazumi, they're often the ones who are doing it. So I had listened to things that they had prepared. So Daniel had to actually spend a lot of time with me, you know, less vibrato, more vibrato, tinier, higher. And Jim was there saying, like, what Silverstream would be more excited here and like punctuate this. So I got a great paid lesson in uh, singing, <laughs> which was awesome. So unfortunately, you're going to have to listen to the recordings that we've already put together in season eight, but um, sorry. <laughs> You've done television shows and for television shows that have lots of different seasons and episodes, do you get a chance to watch episodes of the shows and the characters that you do but don't have your character in those particular episodes? Like while we're making it, just so, as preparation, you've got. Do you get a whole lot of free time? You've got busy schedules. Do you watch maybe other characters 
or other episodes of My Little Pony that don't necessarily have your characters in them? Why? Yeah, occasionally. Um, my nieces are obsessed with the show, so I watch it with them. Um, you know, that's that's my connection to it, or that was my connection before I got on the show. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess sort of yes. My schedule is a lot busy, but. Um, <laughs> But it's nice to get a flavor of the cartoon, you know, like really be reminded of, again, the energy and understand the whole world. So I have seen a good amount of Pony episodes, but certainly not the whole canon. Uh, yeah, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, we'll check it out. Yeah, we'll look at other, other stuff. Uh, I have two young girls, so it's also depending on what they watch. There's a big Paw Patrol section of their life that they need to watch, so I heard a lot of that. Yep. But uh, yeah, it's always good, and it's always funny when you're, you know, they've got the show on, and I'm like, oh, is that Brian Drummond? Or totally. Like, no. <laughs> uh, oh Ashley's, I hear Ashley in my living room. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Again, piggyback, yeah, piggybacking off of that question, um, are you guys familiar with the Equestria Girls universe? Not too familiar, but yeah, I know that. Okay. Show. So, what would your characters dress like in that world if they were the Equestria Girl equivalent of humans? Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'd like to see a tutu or something. Something fun and like, like dancey. That's, that's my impulse. I don't know, I feel like maybe Thorax would have a bit of a flashy shirt. I don't know. I see like cool suspenders or something. Oh yeah, suspenders. Yeah, yeah definitely. Suspenders. <laughs> Last question for me. Um, if you have any advice on any person who would like to get into voice acting after they had like a couple of years of performance meter, what would your advice be? Well, in order to get in the room for auditions, you do need to have an agent. And I found that to be the thing I had the least answers, the least amount of answers um, about. Uh, so I would, you know, get to know if there's agents maybe in your area or if there's other voiceover actors who are working um, that would be probably happy to have coffee with you and, and talk to you if you, if you, um, if you know them and you, and you trust their opinion and they know you. Um, I would say just to be, like, don't be afraid to be creative. Uh, even if you think it's, you know, off the wall, you know, that's why I'm here today is because of off the wall. So, um, and then of course, you know, the, the, the logistics, like if you don't have a microphone, try to get in a good space with your phone that dampens the sound, maybe under a towel or a blanket or something. Um, all little tidbits that, like, there's lots. Yeah, I don't know if you have anything to add. Well, learn to ride a bike. Yeah. <laughs> so you can bike there. Drink some coffee. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, my big thing would be taking acting classes. Uh, yeah, which I'm sure you know. But yeah, go start finding some acting classes. And I think that is the, the instead of just working on the voices, um, I think that's the foundation to get to. Um, it's not just changing our voice, it's like the intention of what we're saying, so that we're actually sounding scared. And then you have to add on top of it an alteration to your voice. So the main part is just being able to act and be able to read stuff off a page and make it sound like you're not reading. So when you can get to that place, then you can start modulating your voice and adding that on top of it. That'd be my two cents. Um, when you guys get new characters and stuff, like Thorax, I know it was in a couple episodes for only a small part of the time. Like, do you, are you told when you first get the character that that character may come back later in the series? Or how much time is given before that character comes back in the series later? Yeah, every character is different, but for Thorax, they, I did know that they said he might be, he'll be in a couple of episodes. And then, you know, it's grown into season seven. And uh, yeah, and I was, uh, I thought that was awesome. Then when you find out your character's back, you're like, woo! Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they, they try to give you a heads up, you know, with as being as vague as possible to check your availability too, to make sure that you'll be available for okay. you know, a certain amount of time in the future. 
And then in terms of when we find out about episodes, I would say we find out two weeks in advance, a week maybe? Yeah. Um, and what they'll do is they'll put you on hold so that you save the day. And then closer to, they will confirm, and that's when you get the script so that you can do all the work that Kyle outlined earlier, um, preparing the script. Thank you. Quick question, tying in with that, more on the business side. So when you go in for a, a part like this, like Thorax is not in every episode, so are they, do you do a contract like every appearance or is it more of you do a contract, I'm going to be paid for a given season, but I'm only going to appear two or three times? Just curious on some of the, some of the business side of how that Logistics, works Logistics, yeah. No, but you get uh, a contract for every episode. Even the series regulars, they get a contract for every Each episode, time. every day, yeah, every time that they go into for it. So it's not like uh, a TV series regular where you get a deal for the entire series. Um, yeah, animation is different that way. Um, it might be different down in down here, but up in Canada through our union, that's how we do it. But yeah, I think maybe it is different down here, per se. It's pretty much every time you think you're brought into the studio to actually record. So we've had uh, circumstances in the past where you're being brought in to perhaps record an episode, and then there's a few what's called pickups. So they're from episodes that have already been recorded, but maybe it got muddled a little bit, or the writers decided they want to just change this word, so then you quickly also record um, the replacement or the pickup. Um, so, but that would all be in theory under the same. Contract. Hi, uh, this is for Kyle. Um, is there much difference in voicing Thorax to Changeling and King Thorax? Uh, there's a little difference. He's a little more confident. Um, yeah, there was a when he was in the first episode as a Changeling, it was much more stuttery, and, uh, and he became a little bit more confident as a king. But then he always has bouts of you know, things getting messed up, and so then it, it kind of reverts a little bit into that uh, lack of confidence place. So, yeah. Oh, the old run around for the question. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes, and... Hey guys, um, so just as a con goer, we have this kind of tremendous opportunity to meet and interact with people who breathe life into the characters and world of the show we love. Um, but one thing I wanted to ask about was, as a con attendee, as a guest of honor, um, to kind of get to know how it is from the other side, and also to know some things that maybe we should help facilitate to you, or things we should avoid. What are some things that you like about attending cons, and what's something that maybe is not so great? Well, that was, yeah, this is my first one, so I'm like learning on the fly. I think it's really great when we have a chance, like especially at the autograph sessions, just even in like a smaller room to have like an actual chat, which is nice. Because the energy and volume is so awesome in these big crowds that it can be kind of hard to actually connect. So that's really great when it's like kind of like set out and facilitated. Um, oh, everything, everything's really been wonderful thus far. I mean, like we have really wonderful people like Randy here who help us know which rooms to go to, that's really helpful. Um, <laughs> I know it sounds like we're like babies, but <laughs> you know, having never been here before, it's really great. I love when I get tips from, from all y'all. I really appreciate that. Like, you know, you gotta go check out the buttons someone told me yesterday, so that's all I thought you were talking like actual tips. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's what the cup is like, for. Are you getting tipped over here? Mama's got to get home somehow, and no, I'm just kidding. There's <laughs> um, a tip. This no, is like, for the next episode you record. Do a little bit more. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you drop my name in an episode, huh? Terry's like, wow, that was a big difference. Well, I got tipped. Yeah, I got tipped off, but uh, I was losing a little steam. No, but I'm loving that everyone shares their stories with me and, you know, where other cons, like I'm, I'm learning about all sorts of neat stuff, so I definitely would encourage that. Me. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing that I'm like, oh, this could be... This needs to end. <laughs> no, so, yeah, I don't have any kind of critical feedback or anything. It's just awesome to come here and to be able to celebrate the show that everyone loves. And, um, yeah, and, and I just go, you know, keep keep going for it. Keep uh, enjoying it, loving it. And, yeah. Hi. 
So since you have now something of an audience and a, and a bit of celebrity, is there any point of charity or activism that you'd like to speak out? It's so funny that you say that, the celebrity thing, because I just have never thought of it before. <laughs> like, it really, I mean, one of the things that my agent passed along was the charity organizations that the conventions actually uh, support, and I think that's really cool. Hopefully, by the end, we, you know, there's things that the con will have a sign if that's going to garner any money towards that cause. That's really important, I think. Um, it's not something I've thought about beyond just being who I am and the charities that I donate to as like a human being, um, but maybe that's kind of the next step that's uh, down the road for me. Um, uh, I, I do charity to give money to World Vision um, and also to, uh, I volunteered for Habitat for Humanity, which I don't know if you know that, but it's uh, where you create uh, habitats for for low-income or homeless people. Um, and then in my own life, I'm a big advocate of, um, you know, electric cars and riding bikes and uh, using my glass bottle. <laughs> so, yeah, and I just go, well, I'm just going to choose to live my life like that. But I, I guess I don't, I don't go out and preach it very much. But uh, maybe I should, I don't know. Anyone else? You need a fender, I see. As always. Um, what is the longest time between when you've auditioned for something and gotten a call back for it? Uh, far out. Far Cry? Far, far Cry. Yeah. Far you can cry. tell I messed stuff up. May 5, whatever. Okay, Far Cry 5. Um, that was, I auditioned for it, and then it was like three months after yeah. I found out I got the part, and I was like, whoa, that's a really long time. That was really strange. Yeah. Same for me, and it actually wasn't a callback, it was a straight hire. That's so, same one. From, yeah, from MP3. Yeah. So, I, perhaps that's why it took so long, I'm not really sure, but yeah, it was about three months to the point where I was like, I don't even remember <laughs> what that yeah, is. Yeah, I listened to my tape, and I, it was like, oh gosh, I. That's what I did? Oh man, that's really high energy. You're gonna figure that out. <laughs> number number one, thank you guys both for being here. I love you guys so much. Oh, uh, that's awesome. What is the best thing someone could say to you as an introduction, like if they come to like get your autograph? <laughs> What's the best thing they could say? Yes. Opening line. Have your autograph? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have your autograph. I'm not proud of that. Um, I, I always want to know everyone's name, and I want to know, you know, how, how, like, what's your con history? Have you been here before? Where are you if, from? Yeah, where are you from? You know, what got you into My Little Pony? I really like hearing that. Maybe that's not the first line, like <laughs> player's choice on the first line, but all the rest, I really like hearing. You know, what makes. Yeah, I get, I definitely get a kick out of what people bring to get signed. Like I'm interested in that thing that you know is pulled out of the plastic wrap, and it's like this has been a '79 con. So it's yeah. Oh my gosh, this is legendary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was wondering if you've had any auditions or anything like that that just the whole time you were doing it. Man, I'm bombing this. I'm just flopping. And did it turn out better or worse? I uh, I auditioned for Polly Pocket with like laryngitis, so <laughs> she sounded like she just smoked a pack of cigarettes. So that did not. It was a callback too. It did not go well. I felt terrible because in that moment, like this is what we do. So you don't just call in sick, you, you know, or make excuses. You just do the best you can, and yeah, that did not uh, fare so well for me. Uh, I had uh, I had an audition where I knew, like now as a as a director and filmmaker, I knew the producer and and uh, this executive producer who I really respect. He's uh, a prolific producer, and then started to talk about my movie making in the middle of the audition, 
which was so odd to then turn around and audition. I'm like, hey, how are you doing? What project are you working on? Where's your financing at? Oh, you've got this much money? Okay, who's cast? Oh, well, this person, and I'm just kind of standing in front of the cameras talking about the project. Aww. And then it was like, all right, so let's go into the audition. And I'm like, yeah, now I'm going to be an actor. Yeah, <laughs> excuse me. That was very strange. <laughs> Nearly fell into an abyss. Yep, we good. Everything's fine. <laughs> We got about 10 minutes left. I did not get the part for that audition. But Neither did I. <laughs> Polly Pocket. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Polly friend. There's some auditions where you go into and you're like, you leave and you go, oh man, that was terrible. And they're like, hey, we're going to bring you back in for that role. And you're like, what? Really? Huh? Sometimes you can never tell mm -hmm. when you go in. I would say more often than not, I'm like, good for me. And then you never hear it. <laughs> like, why have they not called me? Yeah. I thought I'd been star. <laughs> when you were kids, did you dream that one day you would grow up to be uh, a, a pink hippogriff or a dancing green reptile? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not at all. When I was younger, I thought I would be... I was thinking about being a cartoonist at one point. Uh, I had a, a big art background, but uh, yeah, what a, what a shock, yeah. You know the part in Mrs. Doubtfire when Robin Williams goes, I do voices. <laughs> Does anyone know that part? <laughs> that is how I was as a kid. I would just do voices over and over and over again. Like they became party pieces that my parents would stand me on a lawn chair and give me a microphone and do it. So I think I always knew I would try to, like, endeavor to have voice in my life. Um, and I'm so grateful that it, it has become that way. Uh, but but never specifically a pink hippogriff. That has right. become uh, quite the pleasant surprise. In acting school, we take uh, uh, voice classes as well, where you work on expanding your voice and finding different levels of your voice. And it's a lot of, you know, preparation to do theater where you have no microphone to project. And uh, I never did very well in that class. <laughs> My teacher was like, who's the person in this acting class? I want to see that person in voice class. And then I think it was really ironic that now I do all these voices. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm back again. Um, jumping off that question as well. You said you both do voices, and obviously your invoice work. So what are some impressions of other things that you like to do or think you're really good at? I did dolphin yesterday. That felt good. <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. It's in me. It's happening. Uh, what else do I do? I like accents a lot. <laughs> I, I, I just don't want to offend anybody. Like, that's always my number one. Like, I had someone come. Does anyone know the voice actor Omari Newton? He's is in all sorts of. Mm, yes, maybe? No, he's yes. in Minecraft. Maybe. Anyway, he came and spoke to um, the agency that Kyle and I are a part of, some of the voiceover actors, and talked about representation in voice and how, you know, um, even though, you know, ponies are. Or animals or there's mythical creatures like there is still like culture and accents and backgrounds and so we have to make sure that there are actors um, you know representation is also important in voice is what I'm trying to say and so I love doing accents my agent knows this um, but it's been a little bit of a battle to make sure that the things that we go out for even though you can't see my face I just still feel strongly that it should be an accent that would be Possible for me. Right. Yeah. Right. So, like Australian, British, I get a lot of Irish, a lot of Scottish. Um, those are kind of the accents that I feel more are part of my wheelhouse. Um, I do a good Owen Wilson. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's all you need, really. Just over my Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, Peter. Oh, wait. I used to be able to be Lois from Family Guy. Oh, Peter. <laughs> I was just in uh, uh, Germany and uh, Edinburgh and talking with the people there. I constantly want to like repeat words that they say. They're just like having a conversation with me. And I want to be like, 
yes, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> and I started to do a little bit, the person was like, do I sound like that? And they were actually offended. And I was like, no, no, I'm a voice actor. You're like, I'm doing research. <laughs> And then in Edinburgh, I was like, oh, I tell the crowd. I was like, oh man, they're just, I need subtitles under what they're saying. Uh, anyways. Okay, so um, first of all, wham. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, this is for Lauren. What is your opinion on stairs? <laughs> <laughs> they're always up to something. I just found stairs. Oh my gosh. I think that is officially my favorite thing about Silverstream. I feel like that has been the thing that has resonated the most. I, uh, I think they're amazing. Oh my god! Stairs! Stairs are awesome! We don't have anything like them underwater because, you know, no way to climb them. So, uh, question for Kyle. So Thorax becomes a king and he kind of has to adapt to that, you know. Uh, how do you think he would fare in the world of modern politics? Oh, <laughs> oh man, if he would, he'd get crushed. He would just, oh man, I don't know. Or he would be amazing and just this beacon of light for the crazy, awful world that is politics now. Holy cow, that's a great question. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Can someone do a comic of that? Just for the yes. being at the White House trying to deal with <laughs> everything that's going on. Yeah! Thorax for 2019. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. So, what's your favorite accent to do then? Uh, I like Australian. I like to talk like this with my friends and, uh, you know, just like. Come up to me, and if you want to do an accent too, I can do it too. It's so fun. Uh, yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a good question. Yeah, well, let me just go to my car. <laughs> <laughs> Is Owen Wilson a an accent? It is now. It is. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so this question is for Kyle. Everyone's, I know there's been more great impressions between the difference between um, Change Rain, Forex, and New We Reform Forex. Um, my question is, um, how does it feel to transition from a flamboyant dancing iguana to a Change Rain with a lack of confidence? Yeah, that's definitely a big dynamic shift in the acting because and, and also being not one of the leads is like a different shift too because you feel a little bit like you have less freedom. So with Vinny, I felt like I had way more freedom. There was more improv with that character than Thorax. And it's actually like a physical feeling too. Like Thorax, you almost, you almost want to just, you know, you, you get a little bit more like closing feeling. And then Vinny's like, okay, uh, <laughs> hey there guys, I'm here. <laughs> oh man, that is just awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it's like this, this, yeah, this different feeling. Right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so different feeling physically, total different feeling. So yeah, that's really, different dynamic shift. With and was it a different studio? Was it which? Different studio? Uh, same, same studio. Yeah, oh. same studio that they recorded uh, MLP at. So I find that changes things sometimes when you're in a different room, yeah. kind of a different setup. Yeah. Have you ever had a role where you felt like you weren't the correct choice? Either you didn't connect with the character or huh. disappointed in your performance? Maybe in those first when they're setting the voice and you're trying to get the right voice and, and they're they're almost like deviating slightly from what you sent in. So you, you know, sent in your MP3 and it's like, I did this one where I actually had the whole mic and I was like, oh, it was like super emo, and I'm like, hello, okay. And then eventually they, they recorded an episode and they kept kind of like tweaking the voice and I knew the whole show was really high energy and I'm like, uh-huh, I'm going to kick your butt. 
And it was so low energy. And then they came back and, and revamped the voice and went a different direction. And so that was, it's a little bit like- With you? Yeah. Oh, okay. But they didn't replace it, but I was like a little bit like, oh, I hope this works, because I'm kind of, it's a big choice, and I don't know if it's the, the right direction. And uh, yeah, so that, my, that was one experience I had. I just sometimes feel like, this is just the, like a gremlin creeping in, but I sometimes feel like, I'm like, oh, I'm not as, I don't pick it up as quickly as everybody else because I'm so new, but then you just kind of have to be like, no, I can do this. So I've never literally felt like the wrong choice, but had, you know, the doubt that I maybe wasn't doing the best in the moment. Yeah. The other thing I'd add on top of that is it's so fast to go in to do these sessions. Like you, you, you go through the scene once as a group, and then they usually may go through it one more time, but then they might just go and pick up individual lines, and then they move on. So you have like three takes on your character sometimes of, of, of a certain line to get it in, in there. Three different ideas, which is really fast. And then you're working with Tabitha and Ashley and Brian and Drummond, who have done Vince. so much stuff, and you're like, okay, I gotta keep keep up with these people who are incredible. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's a fast-paced industry. Yeah! Get it! <laughs> and that's all the time we have for today. I do apologize. Everyone, let's have a big round of applause for more. Thanks for your question.